Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that you're the chairman of General Motors, Hank J. Dieselberger III of Detroit, Michigan. You own 37% of Isuzu, which makes a small Jeep just like this, called the Amigo. You also own all of Vauxhall, which desperately wants a small Jeep to cash in on a huge demand for them in Europe. So you introduce Mr. Okinawa of Isuzu to Mr. Fotherington Sorbet of Vauxhall, and hey presto, Isuzu increases its sales, and Vauxhall, for rather less than the price of a packet of cornflakes, gets its small Jeep, which it is making in Britain from British steel using German engines. The only Japanese bits are the dashboard and the four-wheel drive system. As a neat finishing touch, it's being sold here not as an Isuzu, but as the Vauxhall Frontera Sport. Now, before you rush off to make supper, thinking I'm about to start talking about Range Rover money, I think it's important to stress right now that this rather butch-looking machine is yours for just £12,250. Why so cheap? Well, to find out, you have to scratch beneath the surface. Superficially, at least, the interior all seems to be very well trimmed. I've got tasteful upholstery and a good thick leather wheel here. OK, some of the switch gear's a bit daft. These light buttons are very difficult to find at night, but you can live with that. What you can't live with quite so easily is that all the choice little toys, the electrically adjustable heated door mirrors, the electric windows, the central locking and so on, are all expensive extras. It rather looks as though the original item was designed by someone who took his inspiration from old Mother Hubbard's cupboard. And then there's the underneath. Now, the rear end is suspended not on coil springs, as you might imagine, but on sort of rickshaw technology that looks like it's come off a piece of farm machinery. But do not for one moment think this is aimed at the farmer who needs something to round up his Frisians. With its garish paintwork and a two-litre engine lifted straight out of the Vauxhall Cavalier, it's aimed instead at the person who is fed up with paying through the nose to ensure a hot hatchback. If you are used to a hot hatchback, you'll find the Frontera, well, how can it be tactful? A bit slow. 0-60 takes a pedestrian 12 seconds, and top speed is noisy. Furthermore, it isn't all that sparing with the jungle juice, using a gallon of unleaded every 25 miles or so. Now, these figures may well disappoint those coming to it from, say, an Astra GTE, but as far as Jeeps go, they're not half bad. The same applies with the ride and handling. Those used to conventional hatchbacks will find the Frontera bouncy and wallowy, but those coming to it from, say, a Suzuki Vitara or a Daihatsu Sport Track should, I think, be pleasantly surprised. It is, however, very easy to drive. You've got power steering, a light gearbox, and a good view thanks to this high seating position. Even your granny could handle this, no problem at all. Statistics show that 80% of people who buy so-called small Jeeps never ever take them off-road. This means they're putting up with all the disadvantages without ever utilising the one big advantage. It's a bit like buying a Lamborghini Diablo and refusing to take it out of first gear. I know that if I had a Frontera, I'd never be able to resist the temptation just once in a while to ease it into four-wheel drive and go yomping. Now, I'm not going to be daft and say it doesn't have the off-road ability of a Range Rover, because of course it doesn't. It only costs a third as much. But if you are one of the leisure generation and you really do go bungee jumping in your coffee break, it will get to places that your average hot hatch couldn't. What's more, it will get there no matter what the weather is doing. You'll also be able to get a lot of people in here. There's space in the front for a couple of prop forwards, and in the back, unlike most Jeeps of this type, there really is space for a couple of people, especially if you take the roof off. However, there is one problem. The boot. It's so small, just about the only piece of leisure equipment you can get inside is a pair of wellies. Now, to counter this criticism, Vauxhall is also marketing a five-door estate version, but it too has problems with the boot, or rather the tailgate. The problem is, to open it, even enough to get your shopping in, you have to move this substantial piece of ironmongery out of the way, which is a problem if someone's parked up close behind you. Still, once done, split folding a fair like an Range Rover, and there's enough space in there very nearly to get a quad bike. 
Other problems? Well, it's not quite as stylish as the Sport, and uh, if you go for the diesel version, as we've got here, your neighbours won't think you're the funniest person in the world when you start it up in the morning. Big noise. As far as the Frontera Sport is concerned, I liked its looks, its terrific value for money, and with 580 dealers, spare parts aren't exactly hard to come by. It is burdened, however, with a lumpy ride, wonky switches, and a tiny boot.